Hey everyone, it's Vicky, and today we're talking about productivity apps for small businesses that you may not have heard of. This video is broken into three parts that correlate with three areas in small businesses that take way too much time. One is content creation, two is knowledge tracking, and three is process management. So let's start with the first one, content creation. The first one is Facebook's Creator Studio. It's completely free. It's so amazing that so many people are still paying to schedule their posts for Instagram, for Facebook. You don't have to do that. It's free. Here's Creator Studio, super easy to use. You can toggle between Facebook and Instagram and just click create post. Um, then you can publish or schedule and then you have a calendar tool here. Now just make sure that your Instagram account is a business or a creator's account in order to access this. The next tool is Figma. I know a lot of people use Canva, I use it myself, but I find the shape tool really frustrating. It's difficult to edit the shapes. It's difficult to set the borders to the right pixels. And so I use Figma and it's super easy to use Plus, you can use it as a way to wireframe websites. This is Figma. I use it mostly to do these illustrations. As you can see, a lot more functionality for people who want a little bit more flexibility. For example, you can actually turn shapes into vectors so you can edit them like this. Gives you a bit more flexibility with what you want to create. You can control everything like strokes to specific pixels so that everything looks neat. Of course, initially it's intended for prototyping, for wireframing. So for example here, if you're building an app, you can see that you can design all of the flows in here and edit as you go. So Figma, a really versatile tool that is free if you want to use it. Now, onto knowledge tracking. The first one is my favorite. One tab is an extension. And if you're like me, who is notorious for opening a million tabs at once in your browser, then this will save you so much time. I find myself always going back into my history, into my bookmarks, trying to find my sources, trying to find ideas that I've seen that I like. With one tab, you can actually save them all down. So let me show you on my computer. Here's how one tab works. All you have to do is download the extension and then click this little funnel icon here, which has all of the links on it. Uh, what I like to do then is to name the tab YouTube Video Productivity Apps. And then this way, when I'm coming back to this, I can either restore all, which will give me all the tabs, or I can click onto each one, which will then restore the tabs for me. My other secret weapon for knowledge tracking is Mila Notes. So this is a mind mapping program and I've talked about mind mapping in another video, but really it's how I remember everything from this YouTube video that you're seeing without me reading off the script to presenting to C-suite executives to just reading books and trying to retain what's actually said in the book. It's all about mind mapping. So I'll show you with an example on my computer. So here's how I created the outline for this video here. I have the title up here, Productivity Apps for Small Business, and then I have brainstormed the apps I wanted to share with you guys. Then I usually put up columns, so to break it into a different categories. Uh, one is content creation. Next one is knowledge tracking. Then I have process management. And what I would do then is drag them into each of the categories. And then you can switch them around to decide which order you want to do them in. For example, for this, I've decided to do process management in the end. And that is a very visual representation of what I want to talk about, which is super easy to remember. I don't have to script the whole video. And here, I also have a to-do list. You can find that here. Um, but you can do a to-do list and I have my YouTube flow. So I'm filming this now and then once I edit, upload, SEO optimize, I'm done with my video. Now onto process management. And the first thing we are managing is of course time. I use Toggle. If you are charging by the hour or you have freelancers working for you or you have remote teams, this is a great way to understand how much time people are spending on different tasks. It can even be used as timesheets as well. So it's really versatile. And let me hop onto their website and show you how it works. So here's Toggle and it's so easy to use. All you need to do is write the task. Let's say film YouTube video. You press enter or click on the button. Then it'll start to track your time. Once you're done, all you need to do is click stop and it will populate this task for you and how long you've spent on it from what time to what time. Let's say then you do a video 
then again enter or press this, it'll start to track it, you stop it and you'll see from what time to what time did you do other tasks. If you upgrade you can actually get billable rights but I haven't done that. I think the free one is completely easy to use and there are so many other things you can explore. The next tool helps me save so much time when I write emails, especially ones including feedback and that's the tool Vidyard. When I'm collaborating remotely with my team, with my service providers, it's so much easier to record myself going through and document and sharing my thoughts, feedback, so that everything is clear, they know exactly what I'm talking about and they can always go back and replay it. So all you need is the Chrome extension. Now you can choose whatever you want. Screen plus cam is usually what I use. Then you can choose your entire screen or you want just the tab that you're sharing. You can move your face around depending on where the content is. There's a pen function. You can circle things, tell people what you're looking at, what you want to change, etc. And it disappears as you scroll. Once you're done, just hit the button again. It'll start to create your video for you. You'll also get a link that's already in your clipboard. And then you can share it. Uh, you send the email here or there are other options as well. You can share on social embed. And since you made it this far, here is the bonus productivity hack. It's not an app, quite the contrary. It's something very manual called the decision journal. And this has changed my business, my decision making process. It one reduces the amount of decisions I need to make. It also reduces the time I spend making decisions while improving the quality of my decisions. Now, the idea is that we fall into one of two categories. One, we're full of ourselves. We think that we know everything. And so we make decisions that are actually bad as it turns out, but we never go back and have that feedback loop of learning what went wrong in the decision process. And the other type that we fall into is that we just cannot decide. There are so many factors. So we go into analysis paralysis and we end up not choosing anything, which is probably one of the worst decisions to make as a business owner. And so to avoid that, I've been keeping track of my decision-making process and going back to my decisions to see if they unfolded like the way I expected it to or what happened and what did I learn from it. I use the template from Farnham Street, but I do add a few of my own changes. I'll show you one of my examples. So this is the second decision I was making when I started using this Farnham Street structure. So that was May 25, 2020. The decision was, should I start my YouTube channel? You record your mental, physical state. So are you energized, confident, anxious? I like to add inspired. I find that's when I make most of my decisions. You write down the situation and the context. So for me, it was, I hate Instagram. I don't know, hate is a strong word, but I, I don't really like Instagram, but I still wanted to build that personal platform, do something relevant, do something new and fun. And so I was thinking about a YouTube channel. Now the problem statement or frame I was thinking about, I like to add my goal into this to make it more relevant and actionable. For me, it was, is YouTube worth my time investment? Then I go into the variables that govern the situation. I like to split it between variables I can control and variables I cannot control. So things I can control are the time, my skills, my value provided, um, the target audience that I want to talk to, things I can't control are basically the algorithm of YouTube. And so when I see most of the things that I can control, uh, I feel more comfortable making that decision because it's not just something, you know, based on luck. Then there's a few more. You write down the complications, complexities as you see it. For me, for YouTube, it's about understanding the algorithm and the way that it evolves the alternatives that were considered. I thought about sticking with Instagram. I thought about starting a blog. Anyway, uh, I didn't choose those because it, I don't know, it just wasn't very appealing to me. And then explain the range of outcomes. Uh, so I write down things like one, no one cares. Two, there's some interest. And three, it just takes off what I expect to happen and the actual probabilities. I said 40%, no one cares. 50%, there's some interest and 10%, it takes off. So I think there's more chance of getting some interest and 
as a result, the outcome is that I started YouTube. And you put down the review date. Uh, Farnham Street recommends six months after the decision. That's what I did as well. And that was November 25, 2020. What happened was there was indeed some interest. Thank you for all of you guys who have subscribed and watched the videos and commented. I also found some clients on YouTube. Actually, they found me through YouTube and lots of learnings like Perseverance is key. It takes the algorithm a long time to figure out if they want to recommend you or not. It's really worth testing out new things and you learn a lot along the way. So for me, that was a good decision. I'll leave Farnham Street's template in the description below. And with that, let me know in the comments, did you like these app ideas? Are you using any of them right now? Do you have any other good suggestions? Leave them down below and I'll put the videos I mentioned in the video here. Subscribe and like if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.